Hello and welcome back to Mr. Excalibur. My name is Arthur and today's sword is going to be the CAS Hanway, Paul Chen. I don't know wh where the line of that whole product line is, but uh, their line of swords that I've picked a model from today to review is the Shinogi Zukuri Raptor Katana. This is from their this is from their Raptor line, um, and I picked the Shinogi Sakuri model. So let's take a look at it. There we go. All right. I got my little cheat sheet here as far as keep myself on topic here. All right, so my initial research on this sword found that a lot of people found them to be heavy. They called them uh, overbuilt. They gave them uh, some of the other models in the Raptor line. They, um, they called them swords with uh, axe handles. Um, they call them, you know, beaters, they call them heavy cutters, whatever you would like. So my impression was that when I got this thing, this was going to be a significant weight difference than some of the other models that I have tested out. Um, and I have to say that uh, I wasn't disappointed. Um, when I first got it, that was my first impression. Um, however, before we get a little bit too into my review, let's take a look at what some other people have done with this and what they can do with it and what they perhaps thought of it. Take a look.
then mine came. And uh, here was my experience getting it out of the box and uh, taking a look at it, how initially it felt. So take a look. Here we are unboxing the Shinogi Zakuri Raptor Katana from CAS Iberia, Paul Chen, Hanway. Uh, just kind of getting through the normal packaging here. Um, this one in particular came with um, a very nice, uh, I guess you could say, uh, pre-printed um, gift box that's got the uh, the, the Raptor name and some, some graphics on it. Uh, Cass Iberia, Paul Chen, the, the whole, that whole family of products, um, they do quite a bit to uh, present their packaging uh, very professionally, very nicely. Um, nothing really outstanding about the the packaging, it's all very standard. You can see they just took uh, standard packaging paper to, to close it. Everybody packages these things a little bit differently. Um, but you know, I, in my experience, I've, I've never actually had one of these things ever show up to my doorstep damaged because of some uh, fault in the packaging. So I have to say, you know, the variety of different ways that you see these guys package these uh, these swords, um, they seem to all get it right in their in their own way. Um, nice sword bag that came with it, just again very standard. Now, you saw there at the very end me pulling some paperwork. That's something that actually was pretty unique about this particular sword. Cass Iberia, the whole Paul Chen line of these. They gave all these different uh, these different uh, instructions as to the proper use of the sword, uh, how to put shims inside the scabbard if you wanted a tighter fit. Um, they gave all this actually pretty lengthy documentation um, as far as you know how to maintain the sword. They even gave some instructions on how to take it apart. When I first pulled the sword out of the scabbard, my immediate impression is everything that I've read on the internet. I, it was immediately taken with how wide the blade was, um, with how very solid the sword felt. Um, even though it was a slightly heavier katana than what I have held before, um, it didn't matter a whole lot because it was balanced very well. Now here is something that I saw right out of the box and just how sharp this thing was. Uh, the very kind of almost utilitarian uh, polish that they gave the edge. Uh, there's no hum on line. Uh, they make no secret about the fact that that's not part of this particular line of swords. Uh, they made it very clear that, you know, this is, a, this is designed to practice with, with some aesthetics that make it also very nice to look at as well. Um, going to be talking a little bit more later about some of the other things, especially to deal with the Saya. But uh, these are my first impressions just kind of right out of the box. And of course the next step was to take it out back and do some cutting with it. Um, I have to say I was really looking forward to this considering that is was one of its uh, you know, nom de guerres, I guess you could say. It's one of its uh, one of its claim to fame. Was that this was a a a cutter, something really to you know take in your backyard and be able to cut through either soft or some hard targets. So uh, take a look, see what you think. Now I get to test this thing out. Um, again, some more impressions, just kind of as I was feeling it. Um, here's a little bit of something about the, uh, the the scabbard that I'll talk about later. Um, you can see how little it takes for me to pop the sword out, hanging it upside down. 
and also I'm kind of demonstrating right here that it, it does rattle. I'll show you that a little bit in greater te detail later. Again, my my impression with the the Sia was was not too great, um, but again, I don't think that was the real emphasis here on this particular model. the The Raptor series really was focused, obviously, on the sword itself, which was built very solidly. It really felt nice in the hand as far as how it moved. Uh, you could feel its weight. You could definitely feel its weight. Um, and then it is actually pretty good to practice with because almost like a, a baseball player, when they're putting weights on the end of their bat as they're getting, uh, as they're waiting for their turn to bat, uh, this is a good training sword to use um, because of its weight, because of how sharp it is. Um, it's also going to work really well for people who just want to use it as a backyard cutter. It, it really is kind of an all-around nice uh, katana for um, people who are either practicing and want something perhaps a little nicer when they uh, go show it off at the dojo, or just something to, nice to play around with in the the backyard. When it really came time to cut here, I really wanted to try out and really wanted to see whether or not this the sword's blade was, you know, what I had seen in a lot of uh, a lot of videos. And right from the beginning, it just, it, it, again, I guess this is kind of, again and again, a really solid feel to it. Now, normally, that size of a bottle, even with a, a sharpened sword like a katana, would tip over even after cutting it. And on that first try, uh, it just sliced the top off of it right away, and the bottle... <laughs> It actually stayed just fine. Now there, of course, you know, less weight in it, it, it went flying. But I can see why this sword is often described as just a really good backyard cutter um, for your bottle shigiri. I guess it's kind of a, a term that's been coined on, on YouTube with these guys who are, you know, cutting water bottles and stuff. It, um, you know, it's, it's, it's fun for doing that, um, and uh, I'm kind of wondering and worrying about some bees <laughs> behind me. The trees are, are like that, and decided to take a double swing, and man, the felt, thing felt really good. Just, it, it really cuts very well, and, you know, there I go, just, you know, filleting and missed. <laughs> Uh, well, even the best of us uh, miss. I am not saying I'm the best, but... And I fillet it again. Believe it or not, I actually took another cut out of that bottle, and it's still filled with water, and I basically, you know, created a teepee out of the thing. Um, I really was impressed with how sharp it was right out of the box. So, purpose of the sword, backyard cutter. Um, definitely could tell that right off the bat. Um, going in for some some more cutting here and just enjoying what uh, what this thing can do. Not the best cut, not the best cut at all. But time to fillet water bottles. One. Two. That's about as much as I was willing to risk on that one. Now time for a slightly different test. This is a really heavy um, cardboard TV box. Uh, the thing's double wall and it's got some styrofoam and some other packing material kind of shoved in the middle and I just took a big wind up swing and plowed it into the thing. And these pictures here will show just how far into that box. This was on the corner where the cardboard's the thickest. And look how far that thing went. And it's pretty nuts, you know, how much damage that thing did. 
Now, again, this is because it's it's very sharp right out of the box, and it's got some weight behind it. I think that's actually pretty good for beginning practitioners because you're still gonna ha you're gonna have some fun with it. And of course, as always, uh, just oiling down the sword, wiping it down after you know doing you know cutting water bottles. It's a lot of water. It gets all over the place. And these are high carbon steel blades. Um, none of these are stainless blades, which means you leave them water on them and they will rust. So just as a safety tip, kids, make sure you oil down your sword and wipe them down before you put them away. So my overall impression of the sword is that its cutting ability is well deserved. Um, this thing really does deserve every you know good accolade that you see on the internet about its ability to cut and I think that was you know implicit in the design um, some of the terms like you heard me say earlier uh, that they you know they accuse it of being overbuilt or having an axe handle or anything like that or being too heavy I don't have a problem with that um, as I said in perhaps other videos I started learning how to handle swords when they were big and they were heavy and apparently they didn't know how to balance them very well and so the result was uh, my own experience was with you know poorly weighted swords I'm not saying this one is but it certainly feels good in my hand and so but it has such a wonderful solid build to it the accoutrement of the, uh, of the the raptor motif is really cool. Um, let's take a look at some of the specs on this one. So as we mentioned in the, the specs, looking over kind of the uh, pictures of the sword and, and all that, um, the fact that it's uh, it's got this really nice kind of, um, I don't want to say faux leather, but definitely almost like a suede kind of feel to the hand, the, the wrap that they put around here, is actually really, really nice. For a heavier sword to have that softer wrap really... Uh, is a nice feeling to have in your hand while you're handling this, you know, 
somewhat heavier katana. Um, I got the cutting with it was really a blast. I know I said that in the, the cutting portion, but this really was fun. Now, uh, just a little bit about the steel. I'm going to read this because I looked this up on some sword forms, and I want to actually read it word for word. So take a look here. So uh, 5160 steel. You've heard me mention this in some of the other videos that have featured 5160 spring steel, but here's a little bit more technical information about it. It is a low chromium alloy steel with around 0.7 chromium, uh, which is not enough to make it stainless, but combined with a small amount of silicon, approximately 0.2%, results in an extremely tough and durable sword. Uh, it can be differentially hardened. This one is. Uh, but it is a deep hardening steel. And once done, it can really provide a a strong edge. Um, this is, you know, the the decision to make this out of 5160 steel I think was a really good one. Um, I think there was a definite market in mind when they designed the Raptor series. These are a, a series that has some nice aesthetics, uh, some very basic uh, aesthetics, and of course this is a production source so they're all coming out looking approximately the same. Um, but they have a nice basic aesthetics uh, with an extremely serviceable and wide blade. Uh, this is not going to be a blade that's going to break on you. And, you know, after you've chopped down every tree in your backyard with the thing, probably not going to really care that it's all beat up because this sword goes for around $300, plus or minus. Uh, I would say for that amount of price, uh, for that price, this is definitely worth it. Uh, for what you're getting. Um, and again, the sword itself really is nicely built, solidly built. I know some people have complained about the Ito wrap uh, coming undone after doing a lot of heavy cutting and really, you know, after intentionally trying to break the thing, I suppose. And at that point, I, I suppose <laughs> it would start to come apart a little bit. Um, but I didn't notice any of that just in my limited amount of cutting, I will, I will admit that. Now, there is one downside and probably explains the sword's overall affordability. And that is the uh, Saya. One of my impressions with the Saya was that it's very, very stripped down. Uh, is it, it is extremely light, usually they do make it out of very light wood. But even felt more light than that. Uh, very, not very much embellishment on the Saya at all. Uh, they do have the Saya plug here, uh, very well melded in with this kind of matte finish that they put on the Saya. Um, I don't believe this is real horn at the top uh, opening of the Saya or at the bottom. I think that's just kind of a, a painting that they've done. The uh, the Segeo cord that they put around here is very thin. They didn't very put very much of it. And it's a very cheap quality. Um, so I think where they excelled on the build of the sword, which of course is what really counts, uh, they really kind of cheapened some of the uh, some of the, as the aesthetics on the on the on the scabbard, the Saya. And here's another thing that you guys might want to take it into account when looking at this if this is something that is important to you. And that is this. The channel that they carved out in these things obviously was for a production sword. So they had to probably create an overly wide channel inside just to account for any variation in the production of the sword itself. And as a result, you get a pretty decent rattle inside this thing. Um, again, this is an issue that I have with the Saya. The, the sword itself is, is, is wonderful. Um, here's one more issue. Very little wiggle, and it pops right out. Um, I mean, it's got an initial, you know, push to it. 
And maybe that's really all you need for a sword like this. Um, but again, those are just some issues with the, the Saya, the Scabbard, that I can see. And again, that's probably the reason why the, you, know, you have a, a lower price point for this kind of sword. Um, but overall, this is an excellent sword for someone who's learning how to cut. Personally, I don't have a problem with it being uh, overweight or just a heavy katana. It is going to force the beginner practitioner and even experienced practitioners to learn some control, to really learn where this is going, to learn about edge alignment, to learn about how to hold on to this thing, and it's going to naturally build up your arm muscles and your sword arm. So I think having a heavier sword uh, works just fine, even for professionals. I don't think people who are really all that concerned with aesthetics or want to sink a lot of money into a sword should worry about using this on, you know, demonstration cutting as well. It's got the sharpness. It's got the build to be able to do it. So. Overall, my impression of the Shinogi Sakuri Raptor was really good. Um, it is a, you know, it's a good sword to practice with, or if you just want something that has a really nice, simple look as a katana, and you want to just practice with it in your backyard, tamashigiri, bottle shigiri, whatever you, you want. This is a good one to use. Don't do some. Don't use something that you sunk a lot of money in, when that's when you plan. What that's what you plan on doing with it. So um, overall, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's a really good blade, and I think it's it is definitely worth your money. Um, again, it comes down to something that I've mentioned before, and that is, what do you want to do with it versus how much you want to spend. Um, for how this is built and for obviously what uh, Cass Iberia has decided to design this sword for, this is a good option. There are other heavy cutters out there that will do this probably just as well. And it really comes down to some, some aesthetics. Uh, perhaps there's brand names that you like a little better than others. Uh, Cass Iberia, Paul Chen definitely is, you know, one of the standards of the industry. There are others out there that are making the same basic design of sword where they're, you know, slightly wider blades, heavier handles for more control. I hope this was informative for you. I hope you had fun watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, please leave any comments and, of course, subscribe to the channel at the end. Uh, all right. All for now. See you next time. Bye-bye.